record it. And I'm going to go live in Facebook just in case people are able to watch us over there. Hey, and the benefit of only a few of us on today means that you get to share where you're from and how your business looks and how we can help you. Okay. Let me get us going here. One sec. I don't know if you have challenges in your office with Wi-Fi. It's a reoccurring theme for us. <laughs> yes, we do. <laughs> okay, let's go right here. I'm gonna put it on the public page today. Okay. Getting there. Okay, sorry for the delay. Okay, and we're live. <laughs> Thank you guys for your patience. The HS. All right, so the three of us are here and excited to learn and get to know you guys and share a little bit. So, uh, Brittany, why don't you just say where you're from and what's going on and what your goals are for today? We're going to talk about going from E to P and being learning based. Yeah, so Brittany Winery from Tulsa, Oklahoma. I have the privilege of working on Jenny Woolick's team, the Woolick Group. Um, I am always trying to be learning based, and E2P is just something that I feel like is a ongoing journey. I don't really feel like it's ever a destination. So, um, really excited to dive in deep to that because I had a coaching call with my maps coach today. We talked a little bit about that as well. So. Well, good. Then you can share a lot as we work through today. So Lisa, where are you from and how's thing, how are things going? What are you looking forward to getting today? Okay. I am uh, Lisa Wooler with the Home Approval Team. We're based out of Arlington, Texas. Um, so Keller Williams, Arlington, Dallas-Fort Worth area. Um, really just wanting to taking myself a guess from looking as a person for, and as a business owner, um, learning to leverage a little bit more of my systems as well as good follow-up plans and um, things in perspective to be successful. More accountability <laughs> yeah. in that shell. Yeah. So last week we talked about the first two of the six personal perspectives, which was self-mastery and the 80-20 principle. I love all six of these. Um, however, today's E to P is one that I believe really set my path in a different direction when I got and grasped the idea of it, which for those who may not know, E is entrepreneurial and P is purposeful. And just simply taking what you are already doing at your natural self, your natural state of just who you are in your normal being and just tweaking it a little bit, just turning it up one little bit on the dial to that to me is becoming purposeful. Now you can go extreme and just really change yourself and get all kinds of things, but you know, accountability behind you to keep you on track for those goals. But just even a small little baby step is in the purposeful direction. So Lisa, you already mentioned the things that are, make you more purposeful, which are systems and accountability and you know what are other things you guys can think of that can help someone go from E to P um, a good clear definition of your why mm. uh, a very good clear definition of your why and uh, building your business behind that I think definitely make you purposeful that way that is huge and 
so many agents miss that piece. They're just beating to get going and to kick butt and to sell lots of houses. And then what ends up happening? You get burned out. Burned <laughs> out. Exactly. And I've been there. I don't know if you have yet, but it's um, exhausting and you want to get out of the business. And that could be why there's lots of turnover in our industry is we don't start with our why. That's huge. Yeah. Brittany, I know you can speak to that. Yeah, I think that's really a foundational piece. And it's funny because um, literally this morning I was kind of standing up, lead generating, and I looked over at my vision board and I'm like, man, I haven't looked at that in a while. You know, we make a vision board or we set goals and then we forget to review them and review them often. And that even goes back to the one thing, you know, they're talking about 411s and being super purposeful with them. And sure, I'll write one out, although am I truly reviewing that often? Um, I've even heard like a little trick, I think Jeff Woods mentioned this, and I would like to implement it. Anytime you open your email, before you get access to your email, you need to check your 411. And I thought, wow, how powerful if before I ever even check my email, because we do it multiple times throughout the day, you check your 411 first to make sure that you've ticked off item number one or that you're still staying focused on your one thing. Wow. That's, that's a great tip. You know, I even think having a purposeful 411 is important because I, like you just said, Brett, you have these big goals or a vision board and you, and you just put them over here and you're like, that looks great. And then how often are you going back and reviewing them? And I created a 411 at the beginning of the year and I've been so off of updating it. And then I look at it and I go, well, why is that happening? Well, it's not setting me on fire or I'm not being held to it or I'm not being accountable myself to it. So that my coaching call today, I said, can we, can you help me build a powerful 411, one that really does move the needle and ask me the questions every Sunday when I'm looking at my calendar, like I have a gut punch of, you know, you need to step it up on this. Um, I'll read some things that some people call the E to P, an easy way to remember it is the E is for easy. And the P is for painful. Mm. I guess it's how you determine pain. I like pain. I think we all do. We all know that that's where the growth comes is from being uncomfortable. Um, so does that stick any chords with you, hit anything where you feel like is the P sometimes just too hard? Yeah, I think so. I don't know if it's too hard. I think we focus so much on the easy um, because we can, we know we're going to accomplish that. It's the easy goal, you know, uh, and it's not going to maybe be too much time consuming. And I think we run from the painful because it could be challenging. It could be time consuming. It sometimes can make us take a step back on our business or in our growth. And when you're riding that high and you're real successful, you don't want that. <laughs> You don't want that step back, but you have to realize it's very much needed to grow, to shift your business, to um, be purposeful with what you're doing in real estate and in your life or the people you're interacting with from your clients to your team um, to the office. So I think that's why we like to stay on that easy street. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> so true. Um, a friend, Missy Webb, had had shared this with me years ago and it was just this huge aha I hadn't visualized it like this before so you know in the graph of E to P there's that what is called a ceiling of achievement and as you're going through your easy and then you're getting more and more successful or busier and busier and then you hit your head on that ceiling of achievement and then we know you bounce up and down you know, along that path. And then finally with some purpose, so systems, tools, people, those help you bust through. And the way that she, that she lined it out for me and my thinking was some people as, as realtors, we have a higher ceiling of achievement than others. 
So we start out, if you look at the realtor world and the community of us, lots of us are very friendly and outgoing. We're okay talking to people. And naturally, our E is just pretty high. Like we can fake it for a really long time. And it can be really, really messy along the way. And still we are looking like we're being successful. Although we know the true chaos in our minds, in our families, in our dirty house. <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying. And, and so that was just such an aha. I was visualizing it. So, so they can fake it for a while, but we still know that they're going to hit their ceiling eventually. The other way of looking at it that I love is that once you bang your head on that ceiling of achievement and you bust on through, now that ceiling becomes your floor. That's true. And now you can't go below that anymore because you have proven that you can exceed that and, and, and uh, move on by to have even greater success. I don't know about you guys, but I know that most real estate agents do not like going backwards whenever you have hit a certain number of production. Yeah. Very true. <laughs> I think it's interesting too, because you mentioned the P for painful. It makes me also think of passion. Like if you don't, like painfulness can help drive you and passion can too. So going back to the 411 thing, you know, I'm not passionate about certain things on there. And if you're not, you're not going to do it. So how can you ever bust through the ceiling if you don't have some sort of like passion or emotion or something tied to that? I love that insight there, Britt. And, and we know um, we're both QL instructors, QL for young adults instructors. And we know that we've got to start with them of understanding. And, and like Lisa mentioned from the beginning is knowing our, our passion and our purpose of why we pick up the phone every day to talk to people we don't know that is uncomfortable for most humans would you guys agree yes. <laughs> we know because that's why we're successful is because we do it anyway and that's the that's the aha i think that hi paula we have a new guest on here um paula has joined us so here's just some things that are from the manual of six personal perspectives there's five steps to getting purposeful focus, you write your goals, and you focus on the 20%. You find strategic options. So you ask, how can this be done? Or are there different, better ways of doing it? I don't know about you guys, but in our business, we're always working to better our current systems. Like there wasn't a day that Jenny opened up shop of being a realtor 18 years ago. And I said, this is why I'm doing it forever and ever and ever. I'm never changing a bit. <laughs> Every single day as a team, we're like, oh, that didn't work so great. Oh, we didn't give the best service in this situation. How can we tweak it to make sure that we are delivering on what we say matters to us. And then we fo follow models. We find models that already exist. I mean, we don't have to go reinvent the wheel in our amazing company, in our industry. I mean, we call it R and D rip off and duplicate. Yes. I mean, this is why, you know, years ago when I started this group was because I was finding that I'm failing all over the place all over the place and people and all of us still it's just my goal to empower all of us to, that we all have the same ability the same amount of time and that together we can keep learning and growing and getting better because even in my local market i have top top kw agents here in our market center like down the hall and i know that we have not competed with them on any business that I can ever even think of. And there's so much, there's plenty. So that's the whole abundant mindset that we must have obviously in our industry. And so whenever we're talking about finding models, they already exist. There's the red book, it's the millionaire real estate agent already exists. And then go to other areas, go to conventions, go to conferences and learn what are other people doing to be super successful. 
um, you know, now with our KW Connect, you know, there are follow people that put out video and provide valuable content for you because that already exists. You know, I, I got a notice today because I put on KW Connect, I put all the videos that we do up in, up in there and people will go and search for um, six personal perspectives, self mastery. And today I had a, an email that somebody gave a review because he needed that for Ignite. So just use these ways of sharing your message and sharing what you're doing to add value to other people because we all can learn and grow and being transparent and vulnerable pretty important too, I would say. And then we're gonna install systems. So you guys already have heard of these systems, time blocking, have your checklist, know your 20% and test them and make sure they work. I mean, we have fail forward as a quote from Gary Keller for a reason. And I would even add and do it faster with purpose, right? Like just don't go make a mess just to make a mess, have some thought behind it and have a plan and go for it. So many times we sit back and just get ready to get ready to get ready. And then we look up the years gone by and we've mm -hmm. wasted all this time. And then lastly, bring in accountability. And that would be like, we already talked about the, an intentional purposeful 411, having a coach or an accountability partner. So out of those five steps of getting personal pers purposeful, what are some things that you guys thought of through that as ways you can add in? I know for myself, I feel like strategic options is like the last thing I think of, which is hilarious because even mentioning KW Connect and some of these other things that we have our, you know, hands at easy reach, we just don't grab for them all the time. So instead yeah. we hit the ceiling of like, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. Instead of like, wait, go reach out, resource, reach out to our friends, our agent friends and see who's done it before. Um, so it was kind of an aha for me. Yeah, for sure. One thing I guess um, definitely is the following the model. You know, we, we do it all the time. We see different things and we can, you know, one of our biggest things the office, success is simple. You know, the problem that we have with that is we'll look at it and be like, oh, it cannot be this simple. It cannot be. Let me add this, this, this to it. And then we get off track and you have so many other distractions. Of, you spend so much time getting ready to get ready to get ready instead of going ahead and being purposeful for that. So I think that's it. Follow the model. Know I'm going to be making changes to it, but don't try to look for the imperfectionist of that model. You know, I think that's some of that. I like that. If um, Paula or Tasha has joined us as well, if you guys want to chime in anytime, just let me know. Of uh, Something you just made me think of, Lisa, was, um, and I forgot. So there, that was great. Oh, <laughs> yeah, wait. Yeah, distracted squirrel. Uh, I just know when I was working through even setting a goal of becoming a KWU instructor. I had a goal of that. And in that path of self mastery, I would go out and Google, you know, self, self mastery, E to P. I would Google all these and look for resources of people who have made a video on that before or taught a class on that and just found ways to, and I would even go and take classes with Keller Williams University instructors, I wasn't necessarily needing that content of the class. I was there to view watching another instructor perform, to see it through you know, those, that lens rather than as a student. And so um, that was kind of my wrap up on E to P as I forgot what I was really gonna say. <laughs> awesome. Well, let's go ahead and move on to being learning based. Um, learning based is just who we are, right? As a company, you feel like there's ever too much? I think the way technology is um, and the shiny objects, it, it does, uh, especially for someone who 
is had to embrace technology, it could definitely get challenged or be a big distraction because you're seeing so many different ways of doing different business and, and engaging people and building relationships. Um, it, it, it can be, it can be an intimidating, I guess, but you always, I think anything in life, no matter what aspect, not on business, but just in your life general, as a parent, as an adult, as a, you know, as you're growing with your spiritual walk, you, you have to be learning based. You just can't grow without it. There's something that Gary talks about, and that's called learning for doing sake. We can learn to learn and have a very smart bookshelf from all the classes that we attend. And I don't know if you guys are like me when we go off to mega camp and family reunion and your mind is just blown with all the amazing new ideas that you've heard. And then you get back and you're so paralyzed by all the new stuff. You don't do one thing. Does that ever happened to you guys? <laughs> yeah. Cause you got too much you want to implement. Yeah. And that's <laughs> where, Oh, I did kind of remember my thought. Um, I'll get to that in a second. What were you going to say, Britt? I was going to mention, I wrote it down though, just in case you were going to forget yours. <laughs> um, literally my coaching call this morning, we were talking about focus on the plan, not the problem. Cool. And so like, even when I come back from mega camp and we've got all these great things and knowledge and it's like, ah, like you said, we just go into shutdown mode of, okay, we'll just do nothing at all. Well, if we can create a plan around the most important items, it becomes so much easier. I feel like everything is harder if we don't truly have something laid out, whether it is a one, three, five or an action item or some sort of um, plan. I mean, that makes it so much more simple. I agree. And that's kind of right in line with what I had forgotten. And now I just remembered it's, you know, we talk about, we've got to go super narrow and really, really small in order to go big. And that's where the, um, the idea of getting so focused on your 20% and then really it's your extreme Pareto where it's really like what, and then down to the one thing, what is the one thing today that I must do in order to, to be, you know, so that I, I, I have a pop-up on my screen and I just keep getting distracted. <laughs> you guys, I like, stop it, stop it, go away. Well, I'm, inside of you saying the one thing, um, yeah. I've never thought like this, although this week I've kind of thought more in this, in this way, your one thing can have a one thing. So once you narrow it down and you find your one thing, there can be a one thing inside of that. So don't get so stuck on, I haven't been doing my one thing. It's maybe you haven't broken it down far enough. Mm. And literally, I think it was the newest podcast inside of the one thing podcast. And he talks about that. Jeff Woods does. He breaks down like, the 411 situation and then breaking it down to understand that truly it was the time he was checking it and he needed to be checking it more often. And so he had found his one thing and then realized it needed to be broken down even further for him to actually have action items and steps. So I thought that was really interesting. Well, that's a great, great point. So we know that lead generation is our one thing as real estate agents. And if you just put lead generation on your calendar Monday through Friday from nine to 11, is that specific enough to get you into action? Not always. Should it be more of talk to five past clients on one day, talk to five, you know, whatever detail it is of the category? I don't know. What do you guys think? Yeah, I think if it's more detailed, it holds you definitely more accountable. I mean, because you don't have to spend time it won't it prevents you from spending time to get distracted basically like oh okay well i was going to lead you in what type of legion was i doing today or what should i what you know practice my scripts on or which clients to call if i have a very clear definition of okay monday is legioning my database tuesday could be legioning the prospects wednesday could be going for my open house you know if you have a very clear definition it one it becomes a system <laughs> and it becomes 
uh, you know, you know, your high level, but it comes that schedule. It comes to that high level of accountability because now, you know, there's no reason for you to have an excuse not to do it. So I even think asking conversation wise, like you can get super specific on, okay, call pipeline people, then also ask them questions about their current timeline. Now ask them who they know that may need to buy or sell. Now ask them if they, you know, it's like going deeper and deeper and having that line and plan put in place just makes everything simpler. Well, let's talk about, this is our section on being learning based. What are some classes you guys have taken through Keller Williams or even outside and beyond that have really made an impact on you so that others who may be watching can, can get some ideas from you. QL. <laughs> <laughs> you think? Quantum Leap is such a great class and I'm 90% sure if you go inside of KW Connect, you can find lots of great videos and I know um, KWYP, they just did a huge breakdown of each section of QL. And I got to QL with Gary, which was amazing. And it's just every time I take the class or if you and I are teaching it in Tulsa, there's always something new that's like, oh my gosh, that was so simple yet so profound. Um, and that was a huge class that changed, changed my world. So Brittany, everyone may not know what QL is or what it means. Can you give an overview real quick? Yeah, QL stands for Quantum Leap, and it really had helped set a foundation for, it's built for young adults, although I mean everybody can benefit from it in regards to creating a mission, whose life are you leading, um, who are you surrounding yourself with, all those big questions that I feel like really more so adults probably needed as well because we forget that, oh, wait a minute, I don't have friends because I filled my life with my career or maybe I'm, I've, I've outgrown people I'm around and I need to add some more people into my world. And it also talks about you know money and um, how to set yourself up for wealth and all those tough conversations you just don't have often. It's really yeah. great. Yeah. And for anyone who happens to be watching who has in their heart a passion for our youth and giving back to your community, giving back to your database, um, kwkc.org is where you can go become an instructor with us. And we need more instructors sharing this message. And, and Quantum Leap itself originated from Gary realizing that he had these success principles that he just continued to use over and over again. And he was like, Oh wait, this is how you, these are six secrets to success. Let me teach them to all these real estate agents so they can live this big, awesome life as well. So uh, what do you think Lisa in your, where do you go? What classes have you taken? Um, Quantum Leap was a, a definitely a good one. I definitely recommend that. I think, like uh, she said, it pertains to every aspect of your life. Don't go in there and think that it's just made for business because it's not. It really helps to find uh, you, help you understand you if that's a struggle. Mm -hmm. um, mine, I guess a lot I've came through is learning. We've had different agents or put together in the office too, book clubs. So when we really broke down the MRA uh, week by week, uh, we've done the one thing. Uh, the Miracle Morning, uh, the Seven Levels of Communication. Those are not only books that are going to build in your business foundation, but build you as a person. So uh, that those things have been very things for me as business-wise. So I think definitely Quantum Leap is, is a good one. Um, doing a good book club, whether it's here with agents or in the office. Um, another good one was that uh, 30, 60, 90 when you're getting ready to <laughs> hire and build your team and grow your business. Um, that was a really good one, 30, 60, 90. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, there's just, it's limitless really. I mean, we're not the number one training company out of all companies, not just real estate for a reason. It's because we have all these options and this is where we can get overwhelmed with learning, 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 sitting in the classroom and then not getting into action. Um, mm -hmm. So that's just where, you know, going back to how do you make sure you do get into action is have just one thing. Let's just take it back to the one thing. Just yeah. take a class and say, this is the one thing that I just got from this. And therefore that class was a success. Um, so tell me in you just to go to book clubs because 
listening to books or reading books are an amazing way to learn. And then I think sharing with your peers will help you, you know, really get it to sink in and get into action. What are the best, best ways you've seen book clubs performed? Maybe because I have one coming up that I'm. <laughs> we started, I guess, with Lab Coke Agent. They did a book club, just different books. And, you know, you have the groups that are offer that um, to try to make it more local and responsible. We've done some in the office. Um, and then we have a, I have a private book club, so it's like three. But uh, make sure that you're getting that um, variety in, a growth in for yourself. I think that this step in here, step four, is very very important in uh, the six perspectives because you have to be learning based. Everything is not going to be the same. You know, like you said, if I start this business the way I was 12 years ago, I just, we wouldn't even imagine what it is now. So just being learning based on that, I think have a good, good plan of that and variety of it, but definitely holding everyone accountable and commitment to that and participant, but staying focused on the book club and the time frame. So, yeah. That's great. Do you guys set goals around in a year, how many books you're going to read or when you're going to read, or if you're going to listen, how are you doing that? Um, yes, I set goals for how many books I want to re read, just not only for business wise, but self growth as well. Um, try to do at least two a month uh, for that um, aspect of it. Um, and then definitely have it in line of where I'm, what I'm focusing on, you know, like if I'm doing something for health or <laughs> eating healthy, which I need to focus on a lot more, we definitely want to make sure we're having something in that would not only mindset for that, but understanding that healthy lifestyle and have somebody accountable for that aspect of it. And then business wise, I don't always want it to be realtors. I do want it to be some other entrepreneurs that in there, or even some people work, you know, still work for corporations because it's a variety. You're seeing it from all different levels and we can grow and learn together. But the minimum we try to do is uh, 24. So two books a month. That's awesome. Brent, I know you're all about learning. Yeah, I love reading books. And I think that as adults, we forget <laughs> that we should read. <laughs> and so I do have a goal around that. Um, I'm off goal, <laughs> um, which is not being purposeful with reading. Although I also wanted to give a shout out to Jenny Woolick in this book because she gifted our team this book. You can find it on Amazon and it's like $5 or $8 or something on Amazon. It was on sale um, whenever I found it. But um, it's amazing. And it does goal setting and has some different tips and tricks and it just it bleeds Keller Williams all over, which is awesome. Um, let, me, are so important. let me give a shout out to a shout out because I actually got that from Jordan Freed who shared that with me when we were having a conversation and he got it from Craig Zuber. So it just makes it. Twist. <laughs> well, thank you to all the people because it's awesome. And there's a whole series. There's like yeah. a number two book for couples and a number one book for yourself. And it's so good. Yeah. Well, in that book, let's just talk about that book for a sec, Britt, because show them again what it says on the front. Where will you be in five years from today? And we think about this a lot, Britt, because we teach QL. And so we're having these conversations. And if you guys have taken bold before in the old bowl, you think and visualize your life, you know, when you're 80 years old and and we know that a few years back from the big stage at Family Reunion, Gary Keller said, and just wowed and floored all of us when he said, you can be anywhere you want to be in five years. And we were like, that's, that's so profound. And now when I look back five years from now, that was 2014. And since then, our production has doubled. My life has gotten better, more purposeful. And I, now, speaking of the P, more passion is involved in my life and my business. And I think that's showing. And then that's attracting awesome people into our world and our team. And then it just becomes this cycle of thinking big is sometimes just visualizing your life where it can be without limits on it. Mm -hmm. And then thinking it first, and then it usually happens. The first ever mega camp I went to was 10 years ago and I was 
floored, blown away. Back then I was a single agent in the mess of and chaos of being a single agent and a mom and a, and a spouse and a friend and a you know sister, all the things that we do. And I remember the biggest thing for me back then was that, oh my gosh, these agents up on stage are amazing. And wait, they're just like me. They're, they don't have this like special power that helps them be that way. And then I'll tell you back then, Ben Kenny and Jeff Glover were up on the stage and they were babies, like baby face. They still are, but even more so. And so whenever I'm getting slapped in the face by seeing this talent that's, you know, half my age <laughs> on stage, <laughs> but that's what's so cool about our company is because we are an open book company. We can see everyone's production. We can see what the truths are because sometimes can't we build up a story that we think you know oh my gosh I can never be like them but when we know that we all have the same abilities and that's what I'm just going to say one of my favorite pieces of the most recent mega camp was that every person on stage had their PNL reviewed by Gary I like that too this year that's a big deal you guys because the, the talk behind the scenes in the past would be, oh, sure, they sell five bajillion, gajillion houses, but what about, right? So we started having negative thoughts and creating stories in our head about their truth. And now we don't have to even do that because those that got to be on stage earned the right to be there and are running it the way that we should run it, like a CEO and like a business. So those are who we should model. I mean, you talked at the beginning of this whole video about vulnerability and didn't that show us vulnerability by knowing and Gary stating that they all shared their P&Ls. We're all like, oh, that's really vulnerable. Well, it, it creates instant like, okay, we're going to listen to you guys. And this is cool. Well, I just got a, a message from um, a, my new coach that asked the question, you know, if Gary called you up and said, you need to cut your P&L, your expenses by 10% in order to get in my mastermind group without changing any quality of service that you provide, could you do it? Wow. Wow. I mean, if that was true, yes, today, like we're done. <laughs> I'll fire myself. <laughs> So it's just that powerful and that simple, I think, um, thinking big. So the, back to the five years in that book. Here, it all, let's just wrap it up and get back to the beginning of how Lisa started it, of you got to know why we're doing this. And um, Brittany and I have a, an awesome exercise that we do in um, QL for young adults of how they can, how you work through and discover your own personal mission statement. And I'm happy to share that because I think, that gave me lots of insight. I know Britt too. Mm -hmm. You should share that because share that. I've worked through other mission statements and I always tell people, God, ours is the best. Jimmy has this great like formula. And so you should for sure share it because I think it's just a different way of breaking it down and it really works through all, yeah, all possible brain thought, mm -hmm. everything just gets to be worked out. Yeah. Well, those were two of the six, six personal perspectives in the, the class that I teach, those are pretty small sections. Like the pages aren't that long, but the message is powerful. Mm -hmm. Going from E to P can change your life. And along the way, you know, how you get to P is by being learning based. How you work on self mastery is being learning based and being purposeful. How you get to do all of those is by knowing your big rocks every day. They're just all tied in together. Any final thoughts that you guys have today? And I know Brittany's got to get back to lead generation. <laughs> it was fun. Thank you for letting me join. You bet. You bet. Well, I appreciate you ladies and we will do it again in a month. We will wrap up with, we're going to do removing limiting beliefs. And then lastly is, oh, be accountable. Love it. Awesome. So Jenny, will you post the um, how to come up with the vision on this link on Zoom or, sure. or 
you'll post it in your journey with Jenny. I'll probably, I'll probably put it in the closed group. So it's probably in there somewhere, but I'll reshare it. So you can. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies have a good day. You too. Have a good one.